The good, shepherd, the good shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep, and willingly died it for his flock. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Dear friends, we come to celebrate these Paschal mysteries. Let us recall our sins and thank God for his mercy and his peace. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. May your right hand, O Lord, we pray, encompass your family with perpetual help, so that, defended from all wickedness by the resurrection of your only begotten Son, we may make our way by means of your heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There was an attempt in Iconium by both the Gentiles and the Jews, together with their leaders, to attack and stone Paul and Barnabas. They realized it and fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding countryside where they continued to proclaim the good news. At Lystra, there was a crippled man, lame from birth, who had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, who looked intently at him, saw that he had the faith to be healed, and called out in a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. He jumped up and began to walk about. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they cried out in Lyconian, the gods have come down to us in human form. They called Barnabas Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, for he, together with the people, intended to offer sacrifice. The apostles Barnabas and Paul tore their garments when they heard this and rushed out into the crowd shouting, Men, why are you doing this? We are of the same nature as you human beings. We proclaim to you good news that you should turn from these idols to the living God who made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all Gentiles to go their own ways. Yet, in bestowing his goodness, he did not leave himself without witness. For he gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, and filled you with nourishment and gladness for your hearts. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. The word of the Lord. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. Because of your mercy, because of your truth, why should the pagans say, where is their God? Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. 
May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Heaven is in the heaven of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Judas, not the Iscariot, said to him, Master, then what happened that you will, then what happened that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. This morning, dear friends, in our first reading, we see a promise fulfilled. We witness a promise fulfilled. In this hilarious story of Barnabas and Paul being mistaken for the Greek gods, this amazingly hilarious story, we see a promise fulfilled by the Lord Jesus. We remember that in the Gospel of Matthew, and I believe in Luke as well, that the the twelve, they were astonished and completely floored about seeing all these miracles taking place. The blind being given their sight, the crippled being able to walk, all these, the mute being able to speak, and the disciples being completely astounded, completely floored, of which Jesus tells them, you will do greater things in my name, in your own ministry, that you will do greater things because you're, you will invoke my name. And today, in today's reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we see the promise fulfilled, that by Paul, just by looking at a man, gives him his life back takes away his illness, allows him to stand on his feet. And we remember, remember from a couple weeks ago with St. Peter that, that in Jerusalem, people would line up around St. Peter just to be touched by his shadow, and they will be healed. Greater things will be done when you invoke my name. And indeed, today, we occasionally would hear about the occasional miracle taking place, about Jesus' name being invoked. Admittedly, some are false and some of them are frauds, but some of them you have to look with a serious heart. That indeed, because we look, because we invoke the Lord's name, goodness and healing and miracles still do take place 2,000 years later. Now, for many of us, are, when we invoke Jesus' name, well, we automatically see the dead rise from the dead or the blind cured or suddenly peace in Eastern Europe simply because we <laughs> ask for the Jesus' name. Maybe, maybe not. But we are guaranteed by virtue of our baptism, by virtue of our life of prayer, by virtue of the very fact that we are a conduit of peace, that we too may be an instrument of Jesus' love. So through our example... Who will we invite to come to Mass on a regular occasion? Because of our example, who will we expose to the mercy of our God? Which person will we touch that no one else can touch 
because of our example, the way we live our life, because of our prayers. May this day, as we've received the Lord Jesus into our heart, may this be the day where we'll be open to, re- to be that conduit of grace, that conduit of peace, that conduit of healing in someone's life, so that all of us together may worship our God and become the saints we are called to be. We rise now and offer our prayers to the Lord. We pray for the Church Universal that all of us, the Church baptized, may be the conduits of the Lord's justice and the Lord's peace in the world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those in need of healing this day. We pray to the Lord. We pray for, uh, we pray for an increase of vocations to religious life, to the priesthood, uh, to the Sisters of Notre Dame, to the Dominican Order, to the Archdiocese. We pray to the Lord. We pray for uh, the progress of peace throughout our world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the recently deceased at this Mass. We pray for John Edward Emmanuel Villarosa. And we pray for all those who remember them well. We pray to the Lord. In a moment of silence, dear friends, we offer our prayers to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. In this month of May, we pray together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray, dear friends, that this your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy. Hosanna in the heart. Thank you. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be, in your, to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, Alex's assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our act of spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe that you are present. 
in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Communion Antiphon. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you, says the Lord. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you always in the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> 